Hey, uh, this video is about adiabatic processes and calculating the rate of air temperature as it goes up a mountain and then down the other side of a mountain. So uh, it's going to be air going up and as it does that it cools and as it descends the other side you know that it heats up. Now really important numbers for calculating this is the dry adiabatic rate, D-A-R, dry adiabatic rate. It's 5.5 degrees Fahrenheit per thousand feet. Uh, anytime air is dry, meaning it's less than 100% relative humidity, then it's gonna be, it's gonna heat and cool by this amount, by 5.5 degrees per thousand feet. Uh, if air is saturated, that means it's at 100% relative humidity, then we use the saturated adiabatic rate, which is 3.3 degrees Fahrenheit per thousand feet. Um, so this is going to be air, like if you look at a mountain and there's clouds around the mountain at the, at the top, that is saturated air, that's the saturated adiabatic level, um, which we also call the lifting condensation level, or LCL, is the altitude, so like 0, 000, 0 feet, 1,000 feet, 2,000, 3, 4, 5,000 feet, the altitude where you can see the clouds is probably going to be the LCL, the lifting condensation level. Uh, Dew point temperature is the air temperature when air is saturated. So it's the temperature that you get to when you switch to the saturated adiabatic rate. Now, in real life, that might never happen. It might be, uh, might never be cloudy on top of a mountain. It might not rain on top of a mountain. It's not always raining in the mountains. If you go out your window in LA County and you look at the San Gabriels, sometimes they have clouds at the top, which would be the LCL. Sometimes they don't have clouds around them and sometimes it's totally dry and clear which means that the air has so little moisture in it that day that uh that's just not going to precipitate and the air is just going to cool at the dry adiabatic rate it's never going to use the SAR if it's you know that particular day so in our circumstances in these videos in our in my uh, in this video in my examples on the exam and in the homework there will always be a dew point and an LCL present on the mountain. You're always going to have to incorporate that into your calculation. Just to give you a little bit more, slightly more challenge, you have to do different subtraction. So this is, it's not a math question, like it's sort of, it's subtraction and then addition. Uh, if you took a math class, they'd say that's not a math question. That's something that you like you did with your, I don't know, when you were three years old. <laughs> it's simple math. Uh, Three-year-olds probably can't do it. So we're going to start off. 70.5 degrees Fahrenheit is our starting temperature at zero feet altitude. Now, zero foot elevation is sea level. Um, Pasadena is about 800 foot altitude. So let's say this is starting at the coast. Um, now, ascending, we're going to cool and we're dry. So we're going to cool by 5.5 uh, degrees Fahrenheit. So if you subtract... 5.5 degrees Fahrenheit from 70.5 degrees Fahrenheit at 1,000 foot elevation, our temperature is going to be 65 degrees. So as you go up in elevation, it gets colder. You knew that already. Um, that's going to be like the, the constant as we ascend, as you go up, it gets colder. Um, and we do that by the dry 80 bat rate until we hit a certain area. Now, um, for this question, uh, let's say that the dew point, no, let's say that you can see clouds at 3,000 feet. So given the LCL is going to be, in this case, it's not always that, 3,000 foot elevation. That's the LCL. So you can see clouds right there. So when we hit that altitude, we can figure out what the dew point temperature is based on whatever temperature it is at the LCL. Okay, keep going up. From 1,000 feet to 2,000 feet, we're going to subtract again 5.5. The air is still dry, still ascending, still cooling. So our temperature at 2,000 foot elevation is 59.5 degrees Fahrenheit. Cool. Um, on the exam, you can use a calculator. You'll have a calculator available. In-person classes, I always let people use calculators too. I don't want you to get the question wrong because you did like decimal math wrong. That'd be stupid. This isn't a math class. Um, and 
you will always have a calculator in your pocket, it turns out, because of smartphones. Um, I want you to get the question right because you understand the process, not because you get the math right. But it's important to do the math correctly, too. Um, okay, still ascending, still dry, still cooling off. Uh, so from 2,000 feet to 3,000 feet, 59.5 minus 5.5 degrees Fahrenheit again. So the temperature at 3,000 foot elevation is 54 degrees Fahrenheit. Our LCL is 3,000 feet. So now, all of a sudden, we know that our dew point temperature is what? That's right. 54 degrees Fahrenheit. That's a 5, not an S. 54 degrees Fahrenheit. Cool. So now that we're uh, at the LCL and dew point location, we're, the air is saturated. We're in a cloud. Um, we're going to switch to the saturated adiabatic rate, which is 3.3 .3 degrees Fahrenheit. So we're still ascending, but we're not dry. We're saturated. We're still cooling. So we are going to subtract 3.3 .3 degrees from 54. So minus 3.3 .3 degrees Fahrenheit to get to 4,000 feet. So that is going to be 50.7 degrees Fahrenheit at 4,000 foot elevation. Great. All right. Still ascending, still cooling, still saturated. So one last time, subtract. 3.3 degrees Fahrenheit, so that at 5,000 foot elevation, our temperature at the top of the mountain is 47.4 degrees Fahrenheit. Cool. So, if you uh, go hiking, assuming you're allowed to, uh, and you walk up a mountain and it's like a nice 70 degree day at sea level, uh, at the top of the mountain, you probably want to bring a jacket because it's going to be 47.4 degrees or colder. If it was dry, uh, it'd, it'd be actually colder because you'd subtract 5.5 those two more times. Um, if you go up Mount Baldy, which is 10,000 feet in LA County, uh, if it's a nice sunny day, 70 degrees at the top, uh, you're going up 10,000 feet. So uh, 10 times 5.5. It's going to be a whole bunch colder at the top of Mount Baldy than it is at uh, in Pasadena. So that's why you can have snow on Mount Baldy for so long into the year. Um, now, why does why do we subtract 3.3 .3 instead of 5.5 once it's saturated? Is because water holds on to thermal energy better than air does, or empty water-free air or dirt. Just like when we talked about uh, maritime climates uh, as opposed to continental climates. Uh, water holds on to that thermal energy better. So once the air is saturated, it cools off more slowly because it's full of water. Okay, now as we're descending, descending air heats, and for the purposes of this class, descending air is always going to be dry. So uh, going from 5,000 feet down to 4,000 feet, we're going to add 5.5 degrees Fahrenheit. For this entire side, you're going to add 5.5 .5 degrees the whole way down. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 times that we are adding 5.5 .5 degrees. Um, so we'll do this one for practice. 47.4 or plus 5.5 .5 is 52.9. I think so. <laughs> I'll edit this later if it's not that. Cool. Okay. And then what we can also do is, is if we know, okay, one, two, three, four more times, we can go, uh, oh, 5.5 .5 times one, two, three, four. 4 equals uh, 22 degrees Fahrenheit. So 52.9 plus 22 is 74.9. Yeah, that looks right to me. 
Uh, so that is adiabatic processes. Uh, enjoy, like, subscribe, all that.